Ha! Ah, God. Eisen's portrait stayed behind. Okay, so when the monster man put them to sleep, it placed them into this kind of collective nightmare. All the people that were in that cabin are now in this nightmare. Now, I call it a collective nightmare, but it isn't quite like that. While everybody is kind of in the same place, everybody sees something different. Now, um, Kismet here is witnessing this bizarre world of torture chambers and skeletons and all that and blood on the ground. This is actually supposed to say no hope on it, although I don't know if that comes across as being that obvious. <laughs> but she sees something of this weird, unintelligible nightmare. Whereas Decker, who if you had spoken to him in a certain way, would have told you that he was planning on heading out in this direction to find refugees... He fell victim to the Monster Man, and you would have found, if you had paid attention, you could see his unconscious body in that cabin. So, a little bit of um, characters from one side of the story interacting with characters from the other. So, Decker, um, Decker is here. But Decker is seeing a battle that, or his perception, anyway of a battle that happened a number of years earlier between between the kingdom here and as of the kingdom neighboring kingdom to the east the layout of this environment is really just not supposed to make any damn sense it's intentionally confusing and maybe even a little bit difficult to navigate there are dead ends down here and shit that just doesn't make any sense holes in the grounds that functionally are really just a kind of a barrier to prevent you from passing through in the yeah, where you're not supposed to go but I don't I didn't have to in this case have a real justification for why a wall or something would be in place I could just put whatever the fuck I wanted Clearly, this soldier is seeing a similar nightmare that Decker is. She's here too. The 
Morty, that's the name of the creature that attacked them. So you're sort of held up from this area, and there's a soldier standing in your way. He's not going to let you through. Now, you'd think Kismet would be somebody who'd be able to fight her way through this situation, but she's been kind of talked into a measure of restraint by Kira here. Now, despite the fact that Kira did, in fact, lure us into this dream, this nightmare world, it wasn't her that did it. Now, the, the Morty was able to, while it has somebody in this dream world, take control of their body. And Kira actually suggested that there's a possibility that while she's in this world, the Morty is piloting her body, sending her out into the world in order to lure more people into the house. It would be... It would be... Uh, well, I mean, it did it with Kira. So... And why wouldn't it do it with her as well? He's got a tiny sprite. It <laughs> didn't scale right. His sprite changed. <laughs> oh my god, his sprite just changed. <laughs> when he joined the party, his sprite changed. Okay. So. so she needed to get him... She... The 
Morty is a powerful creature, and to fight it, she was going to need all the help that she could get. Now, you can potentially kill it in the dream world, and it will die in the real world and release everybody from the nightmare. But she needed help doing it. So she went to find Decker here and have him join the party. He is enraptured largely by the nightmare that he's finding himself in. And unlike Kismet, he is not aware that he is dreaming. Now, we did see him start to come out of his delusion a little bit. He mustered up enough will to start to question everything. But he wasn't able to get all the way out of it. And he fell back into it, and she was forced to just trick him into following her. So, now we're heading back, and hopefully we can get through here. Oh, God. That's a fuck up right there. She doesn't know his name. She doesn't know his name. She shouldn't have called him by name. In fact, it's actually rather important that she doesn't know who he is here. All right, so now we've picked up Kira as a... Look at this fucking thing. <laughs> we've picked up Kira as a new party member, and she is going to... Uh, she is supposed to fulfill the role as a kind of a mage character. But uh, that was never implemented in this alpha version of the game. So she is just going to have the same sort of physical attacks that everybody else does. And it's Aaron slash Bridget. Your name is Bridget, not Aaron. I think this character down here is just a debug flag, so I'm not going to talk to him. So, the Morty, uh, Bridget had, Bridget or Aaron or whatever, had spoken to Ansel before he left about being uh, recruited to go on a mission to head down south to that town of Sudan in order to look for survivors. Now, the, the, army was the members of the military there were understaffed and were concerned largely with guarding the population that they had secured as well as securing sources of food and resources and all that kind of stuff so they weren't really able to go out and um, do too much exploring and looking for people themselves so that's where people like Bridget would come in handy she knew the area and she knew the people down there so she was heading down to Sudan in order to look for survivors. But of course, going there requires reaching the crossroads where the Morty had set up shop and was luring people in there. 
Now, it's interesting to note that Bridget seems to have maybe not quite a lucid, as lucid of an experience as Kismet or Kira did, but she does seem to be more aware of the situation she's in than somebody like Decker or the other soldier that we saw. It's just a, it just comes down to a certain, uh, certain mental fortitude. It doesn't necessarily mean that a person who fell victim to it was weak, but, or mentally weak, but the certain, maybe it's sort of like a genetic characteristic of certain people make them more resistant to the influences that the Morty would have over them. And there's Ambrose. 